What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we are talking about camera basics. Today we're going to be talking about three really important parts of cameras. If you want to shoot in manual for video or photography, you need to know these three things. Those three things are your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO, or ISO, some people call it. Together these things make the exposure triangle, which I pulled a nice little image up off of the interwebs. Now you need to become really proficient in these three things if you want to shoot on manual. These three things are pretty easy to get the hang of once you start going and you'll be shooting on manual mode in pretty much no time. First we're going to talk about your shutter speed. Your shutter speed is how fast your shutter opens and closes when you actually capture the image. So the faster or higher your shutter speed is, the crisper the image is. So imagine someone running through a scene you got a football game, you want to capture someone running or catching the ball. And you want to freeze that image right when he catches the ball. While well, a faster or higher shutter speed is going to allow you to pull that one frame out of that series of photos you're going to take. If you have a lower shutter speed, you're going to get a lot more motion blur, which can be creative and useful in certain aspects. For example, all those photographers that get those cool waterfall shots where you have the white water flowing over, that's created by using a slower shutter speed. So instead of having your shutter speed at like 1 over 250, you'll have it at half a second or something. That way your shutter speed's open for a whole half a second, letting in all that light and giving you that nice water flowing over. Speaking of light for shutter speed, the faster your shutter speed is, the darker the image is because less light is getting in when that shutter opens and closes that fast. Where if you have a lower shutter speed, you're letting in more light. So when you shoot video, you want your shutter speed to be double your frame rate. So right now I'm shooting at 4K 24 frames a second, so I'm shooting at 1 over 50. Now when I shoot slow-mo b-roll, I'm shooting at 120 frames a second. I want my shutter speed to be at 240 to 250. That way it's dumb. That allows you to get the right amount of motion blur moving through the images or moving through the frames, rather. Moving on to aperture. Aperture is how you get a nice blurry background. The lower your aperture number is, the shallower depth of field you're going to get, whereas the higher aperture you have, the crisper the image is going to be. This is sometimes referred to as f-stop, or how fast your lens is. Right now I'm shooting on, what am I shooting on? My f-stop is 2.8 right now. So I have this nice blurry depth of field, but they have more expensive lenses that go all the way down to 1.2. And that you're gonna get a really, really shallow depth of field. But beware, a prime lens with a 1.4 aperture is going to cost you. Now the lower your aperture is, the wider open the actual physical aperture is, and that lets in more light. And the lower it is, so if it's at like f8 or higher, you're gonna have a smaller aperture, so that hole that lets the light is gonna be tinier. So it's going to make the image darker if you have a higher f-stop rather than a lower f-stop. So like I said, your aperture controls your depth of field. So when you're shooting a portrait like this, when you want a nice blurry background, you're going to want a lower f-stop. But if you're shooting a landscape where you want to capture all those details, mountains, trees, what have you, you're going to want a higher f-stop to get all that detail and have no depth of field, or a wider depth of field. Last we go to your ISO or your ISO. The best way to describe it, I think in my opinion, would be fake light or the sensitivity of your camera to light. You can essentially add light to your photo or video by increasing the ISO. The higher your ISO, the brighter the image is going to be, but you're also gonna go get a lot more noise or grain in that photo or video the higher your ISO goes more expensive cameras can handle a higher ISO. I'm shooting on a Canon 90D pretty much after about 2000 ISO for anything. I don't really go above 2000 ISO. So these three things are all affected by one another. So if you change one, the other two are going to be affected. So if you change your shutter speed, you're going to have to adjust the other two to tweak it a little bit. Now I shoot a lot of event photography where the lighting is horrendous and awful, and it's oftentimes low light, so I have to shoot at a wider open aperture and a higher frame rate, because I don't know if I, I probably posted already when we talked about shutter speed, but this image right here of uh, the drummer, you can see that his stick is has a lot of motion blur on it because he's swinging the drumstick fast. So I had to compensate for that by shooting at about 1 over 250. So that's going to darken up my image. Now, 
My aperture is wide open at probably 1.4, but it's still gonna be really dark in this room, so I have to crank that ISO up a little bit and risk the grainy image that might come with it. If I'm filming outside on a bright day and I have my shutter speed, for example, if I'm shooting at 24 frames and it's at 1 over 50, it's gonna be a pretty bright image. But I also want my aperture nice and wide open so I can blur that background out. So that image is going to be completely overexposed. Now, I could either do one of two things in that case. It's either increase my aperture, and I'll lose that shallow depth of field that I want, or I crank up the shutter speed, which is going to take that nice smooth motion blur and make it jittery. So a way to fix that, put an ND filter on the front. Variable ND filter is pretty much sunglasses for your camera, but I'll make a whole different video about ND filters. Getting to know these three super important things to shoot on manual is so important. You need to be able to look at an image that you took and say, ah oh, man, I should have cranked my, I should have turned my shutter speed up on that more, or my ISO is way too high, or just by looking at the image. But I think that's all I have for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this and you want to see more camera basics or more camera related videos, let me know. I'm going to be posting more photography related videos in the coming weeks, hopefully. Uh, maybe I'll record a photo shoot or something, I don't know. But leave a like if you did enjoy it, subscribe if you're not already, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video. See ya. Do you like that when I cover the camera in a little exit? I had to like actually cover the camera though. That's about all I got. I think it went well. Camera basics. Three things. Triangle. I found that online. I didn't make that. I'm not that good graphic designer. Could be. Probably not. I don't think that one that was crappy. That one might be better. I wonder if that'll have a focus though. That'll have a focus though. Yeah, is this your card? With that.